Airlines suck. <laughs> Enough said, am I right? <laughs> the seats have a lean back function that only shifts you like two degrees back. Security checkpoints are a nightmare, especially if you dare to commit the crime of not being white. The bag check fees are absolutely ridiculous. And if you're really unlucky, you might get beaten up and thrown off the plane by an air marshal. That's why this meme is so relatable. What was this man's story? Did he get away with it? Was he caught and sent to Guantanamo Bay? Some say he's still holding up the bag with his foot to this very day, balancing it everywhere he goes like a goddamn legend. We've all thought about following in his footsteps, but how much would it actually reduce the weight? Is there an optimum angle to hold it? What are the exact physics of this situation? Things we have <laughs> obviously all wondered. This question was brought to my attention after seeing it posted in the r slash askphysics subreddit. The problem is intriguing, though the basic answer is that it reduces the weight by about half. So pack it in, we can all go home. No, but the reason that this is the case is because you're basically distributing the weight between two points, half on the scale and half on the foot. When everything is stable, not moving, and at a nearly zero degree angle between the luggage and the scale, this divides the weight neatly in half. The more interesting question, in my opinion, is the one posed by the original poster down in the comments. They commented, If I were to levitate the bag on a higher position as shown in the picture, the bag will look like it's on an inclined plane. Will it be any different? So, in other words, if you increase the angle between the luggage and the scale, if you raised your foot holding the luggage, how does the distribution change? Would you be carrying more of the weight or less? Intuition would tell us that you're no longer pushing the luggage straight up, so you're supporting less and less weight. So I decided to test this question. To test this, we need to first make some theoretical predictions. To make sure the physics we do make sense, the results should be consistent with our predictions that one, half the weight is measured at zero degrees when the luggage is horizontal, Two, the full weight is measured at 90 degrees when it is vertical. And three, the scale should always measure a positive weight. Obviously, it will never measure negative. We can simplify things a bit by imagining the luggage as a bar of uniform mass M. So we don't need to worry about frictional forces. We can say that the corner of the bar being supported by the scale is fixed in place, like it's on a hinge. We will set this hinge as our origin point the zero point for the x and y axes, for simplicity. We will call the angle between the bar and the ground theta. Next, we should consider all the forces acting on the object. From Newton's second law, force is equal to mass times acceleration. There is the applied force from our foot. This will be called F foot. We can assume that this force we apply is always perpendicular to the bar, on the very end of the bar, i.e. at its full length L from the origin. The bar also feels the force of gravity, called F gravity, which acts on the object's center of mass. This force always acts straight downward, which means it will act at a varying angle between itself and the bar. We'll call this phi. Don't get thrown off by the Greek letters, they're just arbitrary symbols. Also, since the force of gravity acts on the center of mass of the object, this is one half the length of the bar, or one half L. Finally, the bar experiences the normal force from the scale. I always like to tell my students that the normal force is required because if nothing were pushing up against gravity, every object would be sinking into the ground like it's phasing right through the earth. Clearly, that's not what happens in real life, so the normal force has to exist. Also, the normal force always acts perpendicular or 90 degrees from the surface. That's actually what the word normal means in math and physics. In this case, the surface is the scale, so it's straight upwards, beginning at the origin where the bar touches the scale. Notice all these forces are acting on different parts of the bar, one at the bottom, one dead center, and one at the top. Because of this, considering forces is not enough to get the full information. We need to consider the torque caused by these forces. You may have learned about torque in the sixth or seventh grade when you heard about levers and fulcrums, you can reduce the force required to move something by using a lever and shifting the linear motion to rotational. 
The equation for torque on an object is equal to RF sine theta, where R is the distance between the hinge, the origin in our case, and where the force acts. F is said force, and theta is the angle between the force and the bar. Thus, using this equation, the torque caused by the foot is T foot equals L F foot sine 90, since L is the distance from the hinge to F foot. Now, sine of 90 degrees equals 1, so we can just say that it is L times F foot. Then T of gravity is L over 2 times F gravity times sine of phi for the same reason as above. The difference is that this is acting halfway up the bar, so it's L over 2, and the angle between F gravity will change as we raise and lower the bar, so it needs to stay a variable for now. Now, F gravity by Newton's second law is equal to mg, where m is the mass of the bar and g is the gravitational acceleration, which is a constant 9.8 meters per second squared. We can substitute that into our expression for the torque so that it becomes T gravity equals L over 2 mg sine phi. We need to define what directions are positive and negative. This choice is arbitrary, it doesn't really matter which. So let's just say that up and right are positive. Now, when the bar isn't moving up or down, in other words, it and the foot are held still, then the torques due to the foot and gravity must cancel each other out by definition. So we can say that their sum, T foot minus T gravity equals zero or with a little algebra, T foot is equal to T gravity. Now we can substitute each of the expressions for torque and get L times F foot equals L over two mg sine phi. Since there is an L multiplying each side, they will cancel each other out, which leaves us with F foot equals one half mg sine phi. Great, now we have an expression for the force from our foot. The only problem is that the angle in F foot is phi, while we have another variable angle between the bar and the ground, namely theta. It would be a lot easier if we could get everything in terms of one of these variables. If we look at the diagram, we can see a right triangle is formed by the lines of the bar, F gravity, and the ground, with angles of theta, phi, and 90 degrees. Since the sum of all angles in a triangle equals 180 degrees, this means that theta plus phi plus 90 equals 180, or with a little algebra, phi equals 90 minus theta. So now we can just replace phi in the expression for F foot and just discard the variable phi. So F foot is 1 half mg sine 90 degrees minus theta. But by the definition of the sine and cosine functions, sine of 90 degrees minus theta is equal to cosine of theta. So actually it just equals 1 half mg cosine theta. Now I know, it's a lot of math. Fun, right? Well, if you disagree, here's a bunch of puppies. I promise we're almost done. So in order to find out what the scale reads, which is going to be F normal, we need to find out the net force in the vertical, or Y, direction. However, F foot is diagonal. So how does that work? Well, we have to use a bit more trig and decompose it into its X and Y component parts. If we draw the right triangle with F foot as the hypotenuse and the X and Y components as the other sides, we see that the Y component, F foot Y, is equal to F foot times cosine theta. Then we just insert the expression we found for F foot in the last section, and F foot Y is equal to 1 half mg cosine theta squared. Don't get bogged down by the square being in between the cosine and the theta, it's just a weird convention that really just means you're squaring the whole thing. Great, now we can sum all the forces in the y direction and completely ignore the x direction because of a little thing called superposition. I don't really have time to explain it here, but suffice it to say that the x and y directions are completely independent and they don't need no man. So the sum of our forces is F normal minus F gravity plus F foot y equals zero. Again, because we just defined up to be positive and down negative. All of that is equal to zero because we're keeping the bar and luggage still, meaning the net force is zero because it has no acceleration. You wouldn't want to be moving the luggage up and down anyways, and that would be a dead giveaway. We can then solve for F normal, which equals mg minus one half mg cosine theta squared. 
If we factor out the mg, that becomes our final expression, which is mg times one minus one half cosine theta squared. And that, folks, finally, is our expression for what the scale will read at any given angle we hold the bar or luggage at. F scale equals mg times one minus one half cosine theta squared. So let's test some angles to make sure our solution makes sense. Remember, our criteria is one, half the weight is measured at zero degrees, two, the full weight is measured at 90, and three, the scale should always measure a positive weight. So at theta equals zero, when the luggage is horizontal, the scale reads one minus one half cosine zero squared. And cosine zero is equal to one, so that's just mg one minus one half, or one half mg. Perfect, that's half the weight, because weight is mg. And that's exactly what we expected. What about halfway between the horizontal and vertical? That would be 45 degrees. The expression becomes one minus one half cosine of 45 squared. Now cosine of 45 is equal to the square root of two over two. So after a little algebra, that results in an answer of three quarters mg, or about three quarters the normal weight. All right. Then at the completely vertical or 90 degrees, the expression is mg one minus one half cosine 90 squared. Cosine 90 is zero, so that just equals mg, or the full weight. Again, this fits our criteria perfectly. All that's left to make sure is that it always reads a positive weight. Just by looking at the equation, we can see that f scale will never read negative because cosine squared theta can never be greater than one. So it'll always be one minus some number less than one. In other words, always positive. The square on the cosine makes sure that f scale will never read greater than the normal weight. Well, great. Now we have a pretty solid theoretical framework. All that's left is to do some experiments to make sure that everything lines up in the real world. For the experiment, I used a food scale, some tape, a metal file with a relatively central center of mass, a ruler to act as our foot, and a protractor to measure angles. You can see the way I set it up in the photo. I measured angles all the way from 15 degrees up to 60 and recorded the mass in grams. Yes, mass is not the same thing as weight, it doesn't matter. The relative fractions we found in the last section will still be the same. I also made sure that the ruler supporting the metal bar was always at 90 degrees to it, as it was in our calculations. The full mass of the bar was 156 grams, so we know that near zero degrees, that should measure basically around one half of that, or 78. At 45 degrees, it should be three quarters, or 117, and at 90 degrees, it should basically be the full weight again. Now, I didn't go all the way to zero or 90 because it was kind of unfeasible with my setup, but we can see it approached these weights as the angle gets closer to those numbers. Here are all the recorded measurements I made. And here is a table of those measurements. This is a plot of our theoretical function, which is the solid line you see. Each of the little dots around it are the measurements that I took. Notice how closely each one of these points follows that theoretical line, except for up high at 60 degrees. The fact that they are all so close to the line means that our theoretical predictions are correct. So the next time you're at the airport, you now know to keep your foot as close to zero degrees as possible because the scale will read the lowest weight. No, what am I saying? Don't do that. Airplanes need to have a correct measure of the weight on the plane so that they can correctly set the center of gravity and make sure it doesn't hurtle out of the sky. If everyone did this, it would be very, very bad. The guy in the photo is kind of a selfish asshat. Don't fade out. No, stop it. Listen to me. What have I done? So yeah, thanks for watching this little video. It was a lot of fun to put together. I haven't done a physics video in a while. As always, thank you very much to my patrons for supporting me and making these types of videos possible. If you'd like to join them, there should be a link up right about now. Also, I stream on my second channel, Meromorphic Live, so come hang out with me sometime. All right, guys, until next time.